Hello, my dear friends. This is a painting cat. My name is Catherine. I'm really happy to see you again on my channel. It's been a long break for winter holidays, for New Year celebration, and uh, today we're starting. Uh, it's a first tutorial in this year, and uh, what I decided to demonstrate to you, it's a quite easy composition, I'd say, but it's have some interesting details. First of all, it's a berries. Color, red color, is uh, quite difficult to use because sometimes, actually most of the times, it's looking transparent. That's fine, it's typical for any red color in any paint. So what to do if you actually want to get a really bright and beautiful red berries in a composition. What I can recommend to you is to plan those areas where you're gonna create berries on empty canvas. It means you have white as a basic layer and this way even a transparent color will look really beautiful and saturated because imagine an opposite way first you will create blue and only after you will paint with a red on top of course if red transparent you're gonna get a little bit violet in those berries isn't it so smart planning will help to you keep help to you to get berries, create them really red. I used a sketch for this composition for first because it gives me an idea where I'm gonna get those bunch of berries from the start and you can find a sketch uh, on the description box. There are link also for real-time tutorial. Real-time tutorial for this composition is going for 1 hour and 20 minutes. It's uh, quite fast, trust me, it's not that long. And uh, this is a demonstration version, it's going just for 20 minutes. Here we're gonna talk about main steps and main moments you need to know. So next here it's a background color. What we gonna have around these beautiful and red berries. It's a winter season, so of course it's a light blue and I decided to choose cobalt blue and turquoise blue. Personally, I just in love with this color. Turquoise looking so beautiful. You can use a little bit of black, but be sure it's a really a tiny amount because this way you will keep background really like looking as a crystal, saturated, blue, very beautiful. It's a nice contrast, by the way, between the background and the berries here, because uh, vermilion, I can recommend uh, for berries, it's a warm tone, and a cobalt blue and a turquoise together, it's a definitely cold tone blue color. So you will have not just a tone contrast, but also a contrast between two different temperatures of the colors, warm and cold. About blending, if it's needed or not in this composition. Here it's a really simple background. Mm, it's not a uh, smooth and uh, perfectly looking blending. It's just like this, you know, sporty. You can blend colors between brush strokes on a canvas a little bit with your brush, but this type of the brush, it's a flat and oval. It's not giving those sharp looking brush strokes. It's helping to you to go from brush stroke to brush stroke really smooth. And um, about size of my brush, it's a number 12. From the set of a flat and oval brushes, you can find a link on materials I use for my tutorials and just find there a link for flat uh, and oval brushes. 
when you creating a background you need to imagine and to create to paint a tiny snow drifts on each bunch of berries here well this step done again here i'm demonstrating just uh, main steps and next here it's uh, branches and twigs how to create them not flat this is the main point because imagine it's just a tiny um, view of the whole landscape so probably on the left and the right there is a tree or maybe uh, there are more trees um, so you're gonna have not just a one branch but some other branches uh, back there on a background if you want to create background um, branches and twigs they need to look lighter than those you have on a foreground for foreground you have to keep the best contrast you ever are uh, able to create here for a background you have to use really soft looking colors so start with very light it's a steel bluish combination it's a cobalt turquoise tiny tiny bit of black but main point here it's a white mm, color a little bit darker than a background but not too dark again the best contrast keep it for the foreground branch and yes we all we need to do right now is to combine all the bunches of the berries together this color I'm using right now, it's a little bit darker than the background, but still it's a kind of light, so that's why I like uh, to create first layer of the branches and twigs with it, because even if uh, I do some tiny mistake, even if I don't like this line or those line, it uh, can be easily corrected because a color not too contrasted uh, i can remove it with no issue at all and change it in a way i like by the way if you don't want to create uh, branches with no sketch lines you can use sketch also you can uh, download mine on um, uh, patreon you can print it and uh, after background and a bunch of berries are done you can put sketch again on top of your painting of course dry your painting first it can be done with a hand dry for example and transfer all lines of branches this way it's a really easy just to follow lines and you will complete all branches needed here some branches can be thick enough some of them really looking thin and gentle and uh, the thickest one of course it's a main branch here it's going from the top left to the right bottom corner like that and it's a main line of this composition so it's a diagonal line that going from the uh, top to the bottom let me create it first with just a gray color and as soon as i'm happy with the line it's time for brown so you can of course you can choose from those colors you have but uh, as for me mm, umber burn here is the best because it's looking kind of natural and uh, plus i'm mixing it with a little bit of blue colors it's looking cold enough not to saturate it not to let's say not to brown because brown generally a really warm looking color so it's a uh, cold enough i like it and only branch on the front you have to create with a brown on top it's an actual wood color let's say like that uh most of the time when you hear a wood you can imagine brown color isn't it but here it's a nice mm, point and interesting point for this composition wood here not always brown 
Say so as soon as you will add a brown, this part of the branch, jumping on front. You can use brown, for example, just on the half of the branch. So those half where you use brown gonna look as it's a frontal part of the branch or, or a twig and other part that looking more blue and light it's going on the middle ground or even on a background here in this composition. As for those gentle looking twigs that connecting berries to the branch, as for me, well, you know, I like to add a little bit of red into the mix. So as for me, it's a combination of uh, red and umber plus a little bit of white. But it can be some other colors as well. It can look more green instead of more red. Can be look nice and interesting here as well. Green here, even if you don't have it from the color chart I put on our left side of the video, mm, green here can be mixed easily because you already have here yellow, medium plus cobalt blue. Other way you can mix a little bit of yellow and uh, umber burn, for example. Mm, this shade, this mix will look uh, not really bright green, but green enough, let's say like that. Some kinds of berries have this tiny and gentle lines as a red, some of uh, berries can have it as more green. It's done and check please, I added those tiny red looking uh, tiny gentle twigs only for a bunch of berries mm, on the front. Those berries that are looking more blended on the back there, there is no additional lines, no those tiny and gentle lines because it's just not visible on a long distance, isn't it? Uh, next step here, well, I recommend to you to fix a shape of the berries because uh, some of them could be covered with the background colors. If not, that's fine. If uh, it is, you need to restore the shape of the berries. It's just a round shape, isn't it? And next, uh, let's talk about the values here. Mm, and the main question, why it is so strong light from the bottom, isn't it? Light direction for this composition, it's going from the top right, going to the left bottom. Mm, but look where I have a light here, why it is so. It's just a part of the huge winter landscape, imagine. Right, so it's a huge tree and a snow laying down there on the ground. Snow, it's white. It's reflecting light strongly, so that's why on the bottom part of the ear berry you're gonna have a very strong reflection. Other part here, which is also important, on top of the edge bunch you have a snow, isn't it? And this snow gonna cast shadow on the berries. So no light from the top and a strong light from the bottom. So it's an opposite light here. If you will ask me what about highlights, yes, we gonna paint it later, but only on some berries, single berries, on the right part of the each bunch, not everywhere. But almost every berry here gonna, fa uh, gonna have a reflection on the bottom part. About a color for reflection. It's a really, really warm. Um, well, vermilion by itself, it's already warm, but even more, I recommend to use yellow medium. It's almost an orange because orange color it's so warm, so it's giving you a nice contrast between the berries, reflections on the berries, and a very cold 
background area, we have different types of a contrast. It's a tone contrast between shadow and light. It can be a line contrast, sharp or blended, soft looking, and it can be a contrast between a temperature of the colors, warm and a cold. I'd say this kind of a contrast is the most tricky one because it's not always possible to analyze clearly what type of the color you have and what another type you need to grab to create this beautiful temperature contrast. And remember, right? All contrasted details we creating only for foreground objects. On uh, mm, shadows, it's an extra red here, which is a uh, carmine. It's a cold color again. So vermilion. It's a warm. It's a going. If you will remember a circle, uh, color circle, uh, vermilion going from the red to the side of the yellow group, isn't it? And um, carmine going another way, it's going a little bit closer to the blue, so it's, uh, let's say, like a violet <laughs> color. And again, it's a contrast between light and a shadow on each berry. Um, it's uh, lots of rules, it's uh, lots of uh, different... Uh, Moments can be between cold and uh, warm temperature, but generally, uh, remember this. If you have warm light, you're gonna have a cold in the shadows. So that's why it's a carmine here, because a light already contains a lot of orange and yellow in it. It's really not that easy to understand from the first attempt. Uh, I mean, contrast uh, in a temperature uh, with the different colors. But more you're paying attention on this question, uh, better you getting it. If you have more questions, again, I'm explaining this uh, moment in a real time tutorial better. But if you have a questions, again, please join my Patreon. We can talk more about uh, moments. And if you will send me your paintings for my tutorial, I can correct it and uh, I can explain to you personally better. Next thing here, it's uh, highlights. It's quite easy, really, because highlights, highlight spots uh, can be placed mostly on the red part of the each bunch on some single berries only, be careful with it. And uh, about, um, is it need to be blended or is it need to be sharp? Well, it depends uh, what effect you're gonna get. If you wanna create really shiny, glossy berries, don't blend highlight spot. If you wanna create them uh, like a frozen, more matte, this way you need to blend a spot a little bit, not blend it completely because uh, this way you're risking to lose a value on a berry because areas are tiny, berries are small here, so don't blend it too well. Dark spots on the bottom of each berry, uh, in the end, and a snow. Oh, I love splatters, but don't uh, overdo splatters here because it can ruin those highlight spots. I can recommend to you to do them on a, a right top corner and a bottom left because here are the darkest area of the background so it will be just more visible. And uh, I used two colors for splatters here. For start it was a light blue and uh, in the end it's just white. And by the way, Splatters are really tiny here, so consistency not very watery because it will give you a tiny dots. If you need a bigger dots like a snowflakes, those one I recommend to you to put with a just a brush because this way you gonna have a better control on area. Those dots will be 
placed one by one, composition tiny, so not that much of the work. And in the end, I'm gonna just sign my painting and uh, can recommend to you to do the same, especially if you're learning how to paint. Uh, it's no matter if you're happy with the result or not, I recommend to you to keep all your paintings and put a day you creating this composition because this way if you gonna keep them later it will be really easy for you to check all your paintings for the one year for example and your progress will be visible for you my friends thank you very much for your support i was so happy to see all your uh, new year awards for me Thank you for being with me in the last year and welcome, join me in this year, welcome on my Patreon, join me on Instagram, share paintings to me. And I'll catch you on my next tutorial, it was a painting cat. Wish you all the best, bye bye.